that I'm at. So, taking the Lawrence Olivier as an example, do you, as a cutter, feel the director's um, uh, take or, or impulse of a play? Do you feel that on the cutting table? Often, not always, but often. Um, the director, usually the, the vision of the whole production comes from the director. I mean, the, and the designer and the director work that all out between them before it ever gets to, to a cutter. But um, you often feel a, a very strong... Um, when I worked with Robin Phillips, I did a lot of, of uh, shows with him during his time here. He, um, his, uh, you know, his vision and his was, you felt that very strongly. And his, his head of design, who was Daphne Dare, of course, um, was right along with that vision. So that what she asked me to do, I could feel Robin's input. In what way? Give that. a specific. It's very, rather, rather um, uncluttered, very simple. Um, it was just, um, he, he wanted everything very clean and, uh, and often quite spare. There wasn't a lot of, um, of fussiness. Costumes tended to be very simple. And um, often, um, often with um, neutral colors. He loved white and off-white and gray and, and uh, black. And um, rather than a, it depended what he was doing, but uh, that was often the case. We had, we had very, uh, very neutral colors. And you'd know that that was Robin's wish. Right. Um, you know, and did he ever kid. did he ever come into the fittings or the oh, cutting room? Yes, yes, he he had. He and had then you would talk with the director or with Robin Phillips yes. about. Oh yes, the yes. fabric or the design or the. He was very interested in in all of that, and as I say, he worked with the head of design, Daphne Dare. So they would they would discuss things. Um, you know, she knew exactly what he wanted, um, but he he was always very interested in what was going on. And the thing with Robin, too, is that he wasn't just a director. He, um, he could do everything himself. I mean, he could do wigs. He could, he could, you know, he could make costumes if he had to himself. He, he could do it all. You mean sew them? Yes. He always, Did he ever? He always made a belt for me whenever, for every, co for every well, not every, but we, we tried to do it every time that I did an important costume in one of his productions. And if there was a belt involved, this is a lady's costume, um, he would make it for me in his spare time. So how does so this work? This. Robin Phillips runs the Stratford <laughs> Festival. While he's running it, he directs mm -hmm. a show. Yes. While he's directing a show and running the festival, he makes a belt. Yes. In when? his spare time, at night. <laughs> now, now you told me once that he phoned you up from the wardrobe in the middle of the night. Yes, he did. He called me, and we were doing Winter's Tale. And Daphne had designed that, and she had left it up to me to work out um, uh, oh, what, uh, what trimming I would use on, uh, I remember it was Marty Meriden's costume. And um, I had worked this all out and had it all pinned out, laid on my table for somebody to sew the next day. Well, he phoned me in the middle of the night and said, I've just seen what you've done, it's wonderful. I'm thrilled to bits. And, um, you know, I said, uh, you shouldn't be. I said, where are you? He said, I'm in the wardrobe. I just had to come and see what you'd, you'd done. And it was very gratifying, but, but horrifying at the same time. I mean, he should have been sleeping. Right. But uh, that was the way, the way he worked. Michael Langham, was he a workaholic? Um, not so much, but he always had a very clear vision of what he wanted. Um, there was no, there was sort of no guesswork with, with Michael. Um, did a few shows with him, usually with Desmond Healy, because Desmond was one of his favorite designers. And how do you mean no guesswork with Michael? Well, um, things didn't change, didn't often change, because they often do with, you know, there's a sort of evolution of, um, and, you know, things can change. The only thing, and the first time I ever worked with Michael and Desmond together, um, was on The Country Wife. And I remember I was really thrown a curve because I was, I was in charge of that production. Had it all done, I think it was the first dress rehearsal. He decided he wanted to put in a wedding party 
and six choir boys between the dress rehearsal and the opening, which I think was two days. I was absolutely, I mean, I was just fairly early in my career. And the first show, really, that I had cut here of any, of any consequence. And I thought, oh my god, I can't do this. Two, there was uh, two bridesmaids, I think, and six choir boys we had to do in two days. Well, it got done, but we worked round the clock. But it really threw me. It was the first time I'd really had anything like that, right. that, um, that I had to sort of swallow and not get any sleep. <laughs> did you work on the King Lear that he did with John Kalagos in 63, 64? No, I, I didn't. I didn't. That was, that was 64, yes. No, I didn't work on that. I remember the production very well, but no, I didn't. And Desmond Healy, what, uh, the designer, what's he yes. like to work with? Well, Desmond's a great chum. Um, we've done, we go back to the, the same era here. I mean, he, I, I came here in 1956, and he came the next year, 1957. And I've done many, many shows with him. And he's a good friend. And what's he, he's very hands-on, is he not? Yes, he is. Yes, he is that. But enormous fun. Wonderful, wonderful experience. So if he's hands-on, how does that affect the, the drafting, cutting, and, and fittings? Um, not so much. He, all, he liked having champagne in his fittings. We did a lot of, lot of champagne fittings, <laughs> which is great. Um, he didn't have too much to do. It was more in the realm of, of um, painter um, that he got involved. I mean, he'd paint. He'd be in the paint shop painting things. and. and the scene, Would he paint the costumes? This, yes, and, and the set. He, even last year when he was doing uh, London Insurance, he did a lot of work on the set. Because um, he, he always used a lot of um, scotch tape and, and um, saran wrap and things to... to um, he was very much um, from another era, an old school of, of um, making things from nothing. And that goes way back to his training in England. And he was, he was brilliant at that. So when you say he'd work with a saran wrap and scotch tape, would that be in a fitting with an actor? Mm, well, not so much, not so much. More, more on the set, more to do with the set. Then uh, occasionally he would, he would do a crown, a uh, headgear. He'd often get involved and actually make, make a crown or some sort of headgear. And it was often out of, out of wire and tape and and plastic and and um, oh, I remember um, he he often used things like that. I remember when we did um, I did a Merchant of Venice um, that he designed for Michael Langham, and um, I did the um, oh heavens one of the um, the suitors that comes. We cut cut out. Um, Plastic, plastic balls, or foam balls, and sewed them all over the costume for texture. I mean, he'd think up the most amazing things to On use. the fly, so to speak. Yes, yes. And um, he, um, he was very, very inventive, extremely inventive designer. Really. Does that affect you when you're cutting something that when you have a, a designer like Desmond Healy, who is very inventive and works the uh, works it through as under his fingers. Does that affect how you deal with the, with the fabric? Um, well, you just, you have to be um, very flexible. I mean, you have to, again, it's, it's, he is the one that is directing what you, what, what you do as a cutter. So you have to say, oh yes, well, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll sew all those <laughs> plastic balls on there. And, uh, cause that, I mean, that's, uh, he, he is the one with the, the, the vision. But you have to be, uh, you can't have any sort of rigid ideas of, of what, what you want to do. You have to just go with, go with him. And what's it like personally? You live in Stratford. You no longer work at the Stratford Festival. Um, you cut all th during Robin's years. Yes. Uh, you cut through Michael Langham's years, which mm -hmm. were fairly golden for this yes. festival. Yes. And it's in its 
curious state now. What's it like to sit in your house and just up the street from this theater? Um, well, it makes me want to, to get back and work, of course, because I, I see I often want to run up on stage and do something with somebody's costume because <laughs> I feel I could do it better. That's maybe arrogant of me, but I, I, see, uh, I see areas where there's still a lot of very good work goes on. I don't mean to suggest that, but um, it's, um, it's not the same place that it was. What do you think it's, happened? Um, I'm not really sure. It's become a sort of factory. And all the old, the old ways of, of which the English brought here, actually, the, the, the sort of coziness of a theater wardrobe, which we had for a long time, that's all gone. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't make, you don't boil a kettle and make a pot of tea in the wardrobe anymore, which I couldn't have existed without. <laughs> Why not? But I don't know. It's, it's, uh, that's happened since I left. You mean there's a rule? Um, I don't know whether there's an actual rule written down somewhere, but they don't do it. It's, it's very different. But uh, say, I say, I, I go back a long way, and, uh, <clears throat> and at the beginning we were very influenced by, uh, by the English. Um, by we, Guthrie? Did, we didn't know what, yes, Guthrie certainly, and the, the wardrobe personnel all came from England. And um, I remember when I left um, Stratford to go to New York, I hadn't really done much cutting here, um, but there was a great uproar, a sort of grumbling that um, why weren't any of the wardrobe people Canadian? They were all English. I mean, they used local women for sewers, but everybody in charge was English. It was because we didn't know what to do. We had to learn from, from the English because they have such a long tradition. What really amused me was when I got to England, two years later, the two of us who were cutting St. Joan were both Canadian. And I found that quite amusing after there had been such, you know, such carry on here about, uh, about the English. But we, we had to learn from them. We, we didn't know, we didn't have any tradition. There was no theatrical tradition to speak of in this country before the early 50s. And um, we had to learn how to do it. Do you think it's been learned? Oh yes, oh yes. I mean, most of the staff now is Canadian, has been for some time. And the young and cutters who have come along and the young cutters who've come along under you, do you, do you train young cutters? As, uh, do they not come as up through? Not as much as I should have been allowed to. Um, they, I think here they should have had more of a more of a training program, um, hands-on training program than they than they have had. We have junior cutters, and and um, but uh, I think there could have been a lot more, because they now have the cons conservatory where they're training actors, but there's very little training in backstage work, and I think that's a shame because it's all part of part of what we've achieved here for a start, and very necessary. And to, uh, Tyrone Guthrie, what was he like? Well, I, I, really, um, I really wasn't here when he was, he was um, I said that I had been here under all artistic directors. That was not re reality, because he was here in 1956, um, but Michael Langham had already become artistic director that year. But he was around, and in 1957 he directed um, A Marvelous Twelfth Night the next year, the second year that I was here. And um, I, had, I was here all season that year because I, I worked in the wardrobe and then I dressed. I was here and dressed Siobhan McKenna in Twelfth Night and uh, Joy Lafleur in Hamlet. So that was, and uh, Guthrie was around quite a bit. I, I, I never got to know him well, of course, but um, he was certainly a, a great presence. Whenever he was around anywhere, you right. knew that he was there. And, um, because of his size, his volume, man. his height, his, his All of that, or? and uh, yes, all of that, and, uh, and an aura. I mean, he had, a, he had an aura about him that was 
you knew this was a very special person. He was, he was great.